Hey everyone, Dr. Jim and Rocky here from Absolute Integrated Physical Medicine, where every single week we're going to give you tips on how you can decrease your pain, increase your function, and of course, your longevity. Rocky, what do we have for people today? All right. Okay. So um, today we're going to be talking about um, something that is more common nowadays, especially with the lifestyle change and the work environment that we have. Right. So on an average, the human head weighs 14 pounds, not including the weight of our necks. So approximately that would go up, up to 20 pounds, right? And that's definitely right? plus the gravity. So um what we're going to be talking about today is what people refer to as the nerd neck or anterior head carriage. So, Dr. Tam, can you help us? Yeah, the nerd neck, right? <laughs> so, Dr. Tam, can you tell us more about what this is? Yeah, of course. I mean, anterior head carriage is ultimately us spending too much time looking forward and these muscles pulling. And when you look at someone from the side, right? If someone from the side is doing this, when you're standing there talking with them, where their ear is not lined up with their shoulders, that's a problem. If someone's sitting like this, where their ear is lining up with their shoulder, that's how they're supposed to be overall. Now, how do we get anterior head carriage ultimately? It's usually because we're doing too much of looking at our phones, right? We're looking down, playing with our phones, where on the computer and you're wow, really intensely doing this, maybe you're playing video games, right? And that's why they call it the nerd neck. I didn't, I didn't know that's what it was called, right? I didn't, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but it's not us, Rocky, right? It's the articles online calling people that. Now, what happens is, I mean, it's, it's a huge effect. A lack of cervical curvature back in the 2000s there was a article study written by a Japanese scientist where it is a correlation, a linear correlation, which means that as your linear means that as something gets one way, the other thing follows, right? What they saw was that as someone's head starts turning and leaning forward, their life expectancy starts to go down. They start having a lower, shorter life. And you know, the study didn't exactly say why, but they saw a correlation. And here's why. I'll give you an explanation why that is, is because as your head comes forward, you're impinging the nerves behind the back of your head so that your brainstem is now not getting all the nutrients and has all the room it needs. It limits the blood flow to your brain as well. And also it causes the lower neck and cause problems with your thyroid, heart and lungs. So we see a lot of people who have a severe anterior head carriage with breathing problems or palpitation, mainly because their head is too far forward, causing their shoulders to round and causing their lungs not to expand all the way. Wow. I didn't know that, that could, it could be that complicated or it could give us that many complications um, just because, you know, it's it's too forward, right? right. Speaking of that, speaking of the, the anterior head carriage, uh, Dr. Dr. Tam, how do you, is there a way to measure how far you are? Because they say that, you know, every one inch that your, your head is misaligned, um, like it's another pound added. Right. So how it almost is doubles, there... doubles, yeah. actually, the weight of your head. So if you are neutral, it's 10 to 12 pounds, one inch forward, you're looking at 10 to 24, two to between two to three inches forward, you're looking at tripling the weight of your head. And it's just physics, right? It's just physics. Imagine you holding a bowling ball right here versus holding a bowling ball this far out in front of you. How long can you hold on to that bowling ball? Not long before your arm starts to drop. Wow. Right. Is there a way of how we how we can measure that or like on our own without going to the doctor? How like how do I evaluate how far have I gone? <laughs> Easy. What you do is you stand by the door frame. Okay? Uh, along the corner of a wall or a door frame where there's a line, right? You stand next to it hold a ruler out next to you and take a selfie, right? Set up a camera somewhere, take a selfie or have a friend take a picture of you. 
Now, when you're standing there, you're able to see, are you standing there like this, right? You know where that line of your shoulder is supposed to be. Put a sticker right here. Put a sticker where your ears are. And you can measure the distance. Put a ruler right here. Now you can measure the distance between the shoulder and your ear. And it's supposed to be in line. It's not supposed to be forward. Your head is not supposed to be one inch, two inches, three inches forward. Now people are going to end up with all kinds of problems here with all kinds of tight muscles throughout their whole upper back into their shoulders, into the shoulder blades as well. That's the problem. Wow. All right. And I guess the question is, what can we do about it? I mean, how do we treat it? Is it even reversible? It's absolutely reversible, 100%. You have to know what's causing it to begin with, right? When you look at that problem, is it something where you're doing that's causing it a problem, right? Is it something repetitive that you're doing? Do you have weakness in your shoulders and upper back? Do you have over tightness of your pecs and your chest? Are you looking at your phone all the time, right? So you got to change those habits, you know? And from there, also, is there a misalignment in your neck locking in that problem so that your head is not able to come back? Because sometimes if you tell people to bring their head back, they actually hurt. It actually hurts them in their neck and also in the upper back because their neck is not used to having that curve, right? So you got to do these exercises. And there's specific pillows that you need to get the head, the head and the neck curve back. And there's all kinds of things that people can do. But you have to know what's causing the problem to begin with. Is it a lifestyle, lifestyle problem? Or is it more of a physical and functional problem? Right? Only someone who's going to be able to evaluate you and you asking yourself the real questions. Are you going to figure out the truth? But also... How do you know how to fix it? If it's a functional musculoskeletal problem, you need to come to a specialist. If it's a I use my phone too darn much problem, now you know where the problem is. Just look in the mirror, right? It's right there. <laughs> right. Yes. Or I play too much games. <laughs> yeah, too many video games. I'm telling you, those right. TikTok videos, mm -hmm. they're killing you, literally. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Tam, for answering our questions about the nerd neck. And again, that's not our term. It came from the articles. But that's right. <laughs> we'll that's see right. you again on the next video. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rocky. <laughs> Bye now. Bye.